just how tough is a uh, 1995 Ford Crown Victoria? Well, unfortunately, this past Tuesday, March 12, 2013, I uh, had the chance to find out in the uh, early morning commute on a rainy day to work, I got um, hit in the passenger side by a rather large tow truck and it unfortunately ended up totaling the car. And uh, what happened was, is I was uh, attempting to change lanes and uh, looked over and made sure it was clear and when I made the maneuver the truck came out of nowhere and um, hit me in the side. And when it did that, it pushed the car toward the left, sort of back in that lane, and forced me into uh, the other car that was directly in front of me. So it messed up the uh, driver's side as well, too. Hit right here in the uh, wheel well area on the front fender. And the force of the impact was uh, quite severe. This was a major accident. Uh, this car is basically what you're seeing right here is what it looked like the day of the accident. Nothing has been done to it. You can still see the parking light from the uh, truck that hit me, jammed in the windshield area. And of course, all of the glass that came from the driver's, the uh, passenger side window. It uh, basically was like an explosion when that happened. The truck that hit me was a 2009 Chevy C2500 Duramax diesel flatbed tow truck, ironically. And um, just like with the F250, you know, everything has a, every car has a story to tell. That was involved in a very minor accident, and I think I've pointed that out in the video I've made of that truck. It's still in very good condition, but when you buy a used car, you always want to try to ascertain the uh, accident history if you can. And so I've, uh, being involved in an accident, I've kind of done that with this car to kind of piece together the chain of events that happened. And um, I've got pictures as well. But uh, basically, uh, being a tow truck, it's got the large lug nuts on the outside of the wheels. And uh, what happened is they grabbed this door area right here first. And then, uh, got into where the crack is between the rear door and the front door and peeled the skin off on that uh, driver's side door and then at the same time the bumper of the truck smashed everything in. You can get a concept for how severe the impact was looking at the side of the car you can see just how pushed in that door really is as well as the B pillar and the damage to the B pillar area, you got the A pillar, B pillar, and C pillar. That's basically what ended up totaling the car because the uh, crash energy had extended far beyond just the driver's door and started to get into more robust areas of the body. Here you can see the explosion basically of the, uh, wind, the side glass going all over the place, including my face. And uh, that's the only injury I really had. My neck was stiff a little bit, and so was my back. But uh, and my, I have a couple of scratches on my face, but otherwise I'm okay. And uh, you can see the B pillar now is making full contact with the passenger seat. It's pushed in that much. You can't even get the seat belt out. That's a, a good three inches right there. And also complicating matters because this door is integrated into the side of the car, it'd be very difficult to straighten all that back out again and get a good tight seal. Of course, the uh, door here is jammed shut and will not open. And when that B pillar was pushed inward, they kind of uh, pushed in and pulled the rear door forward. And so that door is not opening anymore. So both of these uh, two doors are jammed shut, but most of the damage appears to be just on the body of the car. If we look at this big thick frame, which I'm not sure you can tell, it's uh, 
pretty straight and true. Not bent at all. But when you go outward toward the body, that's where all the damage is. So we'll go over here to the uh, right side. Now the crash continued on to the uh, fender area as well too. And um, damaged some parts of the body that's behind it or where the firewall area would be. Causing the hood panel to raise up slightly. I've, not, I've actually not opened up the hood on this car because I've been too afraid the hood won't shut. I may end up doing that in the video, I'm not for sure yet. Um, front of the car is still okay, but I've got some damage here on the bumper now where I made contact with that other car. Of course the parking light doesn't exist anymore. And um, this impact area here pushed out the uh, fender shroud, so it makes contact with the tire every now and then when you make a, a sharp left hand turn or even a moderate left hand turn. And uh, the crash energy not only damaged the, the fender here, but it also flexed the body enough to uh, get into the windshield a little bit. So even though that metal may have flexed and returned back to its normal position, it's essentially weakened. The more you bend metal back and forth, the weaker it gets. So this, these panels don't line up anymore. This fender may have gone up and settled back down during the uh, crash and um, now there's too much interference between the uh, driver door and the front fender so the driver door doesn't open enough that's about as far as you can go without tearing into that fender certainly doesn't open up enough to uh, let you inside so the uh, left rear door is the only door that works And uh, getting more into the passenger door, you can see how they're made. They're basically two pieces of metal crimped together, and that crimp was destroyed as the two pieces were separated by the force of the impact. This is the uh, power door lock actuator motor, what's left of it. You can see the big, strong, solid beam inside the door that uh, most cars have these days. Of course, all the glass is gone. And uh, as further evidence of the uh, body movement, even on the interior, um, even though the dashboard looks okay, uh, the glove box has a lot of interference. So something can look okay, but actually have a lot of hidden damage, and that's pretty much. Uh, why the car is totaled. You just uh, never know. It might look okay on the surface. You know, just go to the junkyard and get a couple of doors and a fender and put it back on the road. But there might be a lot more damage than you realize once you start getting into it. However, the uh, drivetrain is rock solid. Frame is rock solid. I actually drove the car home Looks like the camber on that tire is still where it should be. A lot of times in a crash like that, the tire would be leaning inward if you had frame damage. Same thing on the, the driver's side. But um, what ended up happening was, even though this car looks pretty bad now, um, this car, I was able to drive it home on the interstate, 75, 70 miles an hour, no problem. The tow truck is the one that had to be towed. Of course, with that said, the tow truck is not total, and the Crown Victoria is, but uh, nonetheless, that just goes to show you the uh, ruggedness of these old Crown Victorias. And I've got some pictures to show. As with any accident, what you want to do is take pictures immediately so you can get an idea of the position of the cars and what happened. So there is my car, and uh, I pushed this other car forward and it ran into the back side of him with the left front fender of my car. And of course you can tell they got their raincoats on. It was pretty nasty that day. It was wet. And uh, here's a close-up of the other car. 
pretty moderate damage. It's definitely repairable. It's a 2006 Mercury Milan. Uh, he'll get that car back on the road with no problem. And there's the big tow truck that uh, did the deed. Looks pretty messed up. Like I mentioned before, it was a C5500 flatbed. You can see the um, bumper pushed all the way in past the left front tire. He can't make a right uh, a right hand turn, and that's why he had to get towed away. And a fiberglass hood shroud and everything was destroyed. That's pretty delicate material anyway, so that's designed to give away on impact. There is a close-up of the damage. Headlight cluster would have been right in there. It's now lying on the ground where this guy is hooking up the tow chains. And it got a little bit into the body. Here's the hood. There's a model of the truck. The hood basically flips forward like that. And you have the rest of the body. You got some damage there. So very very uh, large heavy truck hit this car and even then this car did its job protected me and actually got me down the road the only problem I had that the uh, I couldn't move the car uh, immediately after the wreck was the fuel inert the inertia cutoff switch engaged for the uh, fuel pump and I closed the trunk unfortunately, but there's a switch with a red button on it located right up in there, farther down, um, that you just push back down and you can start the car again. So these cars, I've, I've got to say, I've always liked the larger cars for their safety, and I've always uh, read how safe they were, but I never really ever had the experience uh, personal experience to see just how safe they were in an accident and in some ways it's actually kind of interesting that this this happened and I can learn from it you know uh, it's a very unfortunate circumstance because this was my grandfather's car I just bought it in November I've changed all the fluids and lubricants and engine coolant and everything else and I've made videos of that that you guys can watch this, of course, will be the last video of this Crown Victoria. Uh, it only has 13,000 miles on it, unfortunately. It was a cream puff. It wasn't in perfect shape. It had a few what I like to call old man dents where he would hit the side of the garage or hit uh, posts and parking lots near banks and stuff like that. So it wasn't perfect, but um, it was still a great car. And I feel very bad that uh, just after having it for such a short time that uh, I had an accident with it. Um, it's really the first uh, at-fault accident I've ever had my whole life, so I feel pretty bad about that, but I drive about 1,200 miles a month, and uh, just from a statistical perspective, uh, the more you drive, the more likely you are to get into an accident, so yeah, it's bound to happen eventually, but um, it's just a car, it's just a, an organized piece of metal, basically, you know, it's um, sad that it happened, but cars can always be replaced um, it will live on in, in pieces what I'm going to try to do since this is a Crown Victoria I'm kind of fortunate a lot of taxi cab companies still use Crown Victorias and um, I think what I'll do since the car is drivable um, is uh, try to contact some taxi cab companies and see if they'd be interested in purchasing the entire car uh, for parts it's got a nice 4.6 liter V8 engine and AODE transmission and 8.8 .8 rear end all synthetic lubricants um, the engines in great shape it's drivable it would be a it's a crime really to have a wreck like that but it'd be more of a crime to have a nice 4.6 liter uh, sitting in the junkyard rotting away just be a complete waste if somebody else can use some of these parts um, that'd be the best scenario and really the frame and drivetrain and everything was the best part of the car. The body was kind of so-so. You've got scratches on the top of the roof there where the, you know, the garage door came down and hit it and he didn't know about it. Um, stuff like that. So it wasn't pristine. But the main reason I got the car was the, the, the ultra, ultra low mileage. And, um, it's been a, a great one, so I figured I'd make a video about it. 
one last time just to kind of uh, preemptively answer any questions anybody would have like, well gee, what happened to the Crown Victoria? Why don't you show that anymore? Well, this is the reason why I'm not going to be able to. It's uh, been totaled. But um, I'm impressed with how tough this car is. It just amazes me that uh, you can have a, an accident that bad with a vehicle that large and get back into the car, get on the interstate, and drive it home. In fact, it drives so well, the alignment's not even messed up. So, let's demonstrate that. Let's go ahead and try to, let's go ahead and drive it around a little bit. One last tour, and uh, see how she runs. And uh, because of all the damage, what you have to do is get in through the back here, climb in, jump over the front seat, and, and settle in. Let me go ahead and do that, and we'll get her started. Okay, now I'm all strapped in. I'm really, uh, I've made no effort to clean up this car. I'm sitting on uh, broken glass right now. I need some, as Dave Rock would call, serious ass protection. You can uh, get a sense for the severity of the impact by the uh, distance the glass from the side window has reached all over the place. It was literally like an explosion. Um, I'm no stranger to crawling around in wrecked cars, of course. I go to junkyards all the time, so that's not a big deal. Passenger side side mirror is now conveniently located on the floor, a lot closer. There's a parking light from the tow truck. And uh, we'll go ahead and do a cold start on this thing. And we've got no lights, which is good. From a powertrain perspective, there's, this car is running like nothing ever happened. No check engine light, no nothing. Car starts up and runs very smooth. It's not loud, muffler's not damaged. The only problem I have now is the uh, passenger side window doesn't work and here does the door lock. Let me try the rear window here. Yeah, even the rear window works on that busted up door. And driver's door. Yep. Me with glass in the switch. We'll try the rear one now. I'm sure that'll work. Yep. Everything works on the car. It's just got a little bit of damage on the on the right side. That'll just buff right on out. I guess that's the redneck security system. You gotta get in this thing Dukes of Hazard style. So we'll go ahead and drop it in gear. You might hear a scraping noise. That's that tire hitting the fender shroud. No big deal. Turn signals work just fine. Got one hand holding the camera, and I don't have any hand on the wheel. Tracks just fine. It, it's just amazing how strong this car really is. These old uh, Crown Vicks and Chevy Caprices. It's a very obvious why they they're widely used as police and taxi cars. Got a little bit of wind noise, unfortunately, because of the damage on the right side, but. Can't do anything about that at the moment. We'll get over here to the avoid the crown on the road and we'll see how straight she tracks. No hands on the wheel. It's just amazing that a car could take a hit like that and get right on the road. A lot of people are like, well, how come you light cars that are that large, they get really bad gas mileage, well, that's pretty much the only thing wrong with them. Your safety is more important than anything, more important than gas mileage, more important than performance. At the end of the day, you gotta be able to get home in one piece. 
So the larger cars are definitely uh, what I would stick with. But th I think if I were in a small car, like a Honda Civic or something like that, the story would be a lot different. I'd probably have a lot more significant injury than I do now. I certainly would not be able to drive home or drive the car like I'm doing right now. The car drives just like it did before the accident. Very smooth. A little bit more NVH now. Brakes work just fine. No warning lights. All critical systems are working fine. No overheating. Alternators working. No loss of fluids. If it weren't for the fact that uh, it would not pass inspection anymore, this car could still be driven and used for many more years. Let's see here, go around these S's. Car still handles pretty well. go ahead and uh, stop. See if we can get some heat. Yep, even that works. 52 degrees outside and I got the window open so I figured I'd get some as much heat in there as I possibly can. I feel like I'm doing the whole planes, trains, and automobiles thing. If you guys have ever seen that movie with John Candy, uh, they drive this car that's just beat all the shit. They hit a deer and put the deer in the back, and the deer came back to life and messed up the car, and then the car hit other cars. And That's kind of how this car looks right now. But, still driving down the road. The only thing missing is there's no cops to pull me over and say, what the hell are you doing? is handling these roads with no problem, even in the condition it's in. You can hear some of the glass flying around still. A lot of times you see these cars in demolition derbies for that very reason. They're just really, really tough cars. I'm glad I bought it. It's just uh, incredible I could be doing this right now with the kind of damage I've got. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this one last drive. It's kind of therapeutic for me. This is going to be the last time I drive this car, unfortunately. I want to spend some time with it and uh, kind of enjoy it one last time, even though it's uh, in a depreciated state right now. And uh, when I get back home, I'll see if I can uh, get that hood open and uh, show you guys what it looks like under there. Okay, now we're back home. Got the hood open. It actually came open quite easily, just like it always does. Doesn't appear to be a whole lot of damage or any damage in the engine compartment. In fact, if you didn't look at the rest of the car, you would think that there's no damage anywhere at all. Motor sounds nice and strong.
still very smooth and quiet. You see the stress cracks in the windshield there, but uh, looks like everything's settled back down to the original positions. With the exception of some of the lights, exterior lights, and of course the uh, power window and door lock on the passenger side and the uh, electrically adjustable mirror, which is now wireless, of course. <laughs> Everything on the car works just fine. Got the heat blowing real good, the radio works. Pretty incredible. See how good the hood closes now. And a little bit of interference. Yep, closes just fine. So, just wanted to make a video, one last video of the car, kind of therapeutic for me. Uh, not going to ever see it again. Kind of a waste. But accidents do happen. Cars can be replaced and people can't. Just uh, kind of wanted to share the experience with you guys and maybe uh, take some lemons and make lemonade. You know, kind of prove how durable and rugged these cars are. Just wanted to take the opportunity to do that a little bit. And. Uh, if you can find one of these older Crown Victorias or Chevy Caprices, um, you should definitely take a second look at them. They're very tough and rugged cars. It's just amazing to me that I can drive this thing still, just like I always was able to, even with all the damage. So, just wanted to share that, and uh, now it's time to uh, put this in the past and um, move on after the rain stops and get back to this Mercedes 280 SC W108 chassis and get those actual shafts put in there and rebuild the calipers, put new brakes on it and uh, get that old car back on the road.